Okay, so you, you kind of, so let me tell you how I got to where I am. Um, you kind of alluded to that, Mary. Um, I grew up in Sterling, Colorado. Uh, I had an associate's degree from Northeastern Junior College. Um, I was supposed to play football at Western State, but I blew out my knee, so I came back. Uh, after two years at the community college, I then went to, got my undergraduate degree in biology at CSU Fort Collins. This was actually the first time I ever met a, a scientist was when I went to CSU. So I had no idea about science or what any of that really had to do with and, until I got to CSU. Uh, after, after I graduated, I worked for a year and a half doing lots of odd jobs. I think one of them was delivering uh, refrigerators. So, <laughs> but after that, I, I got into uh, UTMB at Galveston um, and I got my master's degree in biochemistry and genetics. Uh, I was probably, I was supposed to get my PhD there, but I don't know if any of you have lived in Texas, Southeast Texas. <laughs> they got bugs this big. They fly, or what, the, the roaches. Like they would just come out through my vents sometimes. You just watch TV and a roach would just fall into your, your living room. And I'm just like, I gotta get out of here. So I thought, what, what's, it, you know, what's the opposite of Galveston, Texas. So then I went up to University of Madison, Wisconsin, and I got my PhD in genetics. And that's a whole different other world. That was cold. <laughs> so, um, so my professional path after getting my PhD, um, I've decided that um, humidity sucks, no matter if it's hot or cold. So I decided to go back to Colorado, where there is no hardly any humidity. Uh, I did my first postdoc in pro proteomics. Uh, that was about one and a half years. Uh, then I moved on to genomics. Proteomics is a mess. Does anybody work on proteomics? Yes, no? Oh, God. Yeah, you can do so many things to, to a protein. I mean, you just change one little amino acid or put like a methyl group on it, and it does something completely different. So I went back to genomics. Um, I became a, I did a postdoc over in, in pulmonary, then became an assistant professor for about eight years, eight or nine years. Uh, during that time, I was director of the bio, bioinformatics core for the lung sport here for about three years. And then about a year and a half ago, I decided to, uh, got really sick of writing grants that didn't get funded and <laughs> writing papers that didn't get accepted. So I decided to uh, form my own company. And now I'm the owner of BioInfo Solutions, and I've been doing this for about 1.5 years. This is my place of work. Um, <laughs> it's my house, and it's awesome. <laughs> that The nice thing about bioinformatics is I don't have to come in and I don't have to feed cells. I don't have to kill mice. I don't have to run westerns. I can do it all on my computer. And if something hits me at the middle of the night, I can go and actually find some data and do my own research from wherever I'm at. So this is nice. This is my old place of work. This was actually, I, my office was right by the uh, genomics core and the ninth floor and RC2. They put me, my, my office was right by the uh, copy machine because I used to jam music while I worked. And <laughs> so they're like, where do we put him? So I had like a little, co uh, like a little coffin right beside the, uh, uh, the coffee or the uh, copy maker. But anyway, so um, some of my current coworkers, I never thought I would be a cat person. My daughters love cats. <laughs> and in fact, the orange one, I think I have a harassment claim against him. He's space issues, but. Uh, some of the statistical and, and visualization tools that I use, um, like I said, I don't program. And when people say I'm a bioinformatician, they usually ask me, well, so what uh, programming language do you use? And I'm like, English? <laughs> I, I don't like to program. I mean, I, I admire people that do and have that skill set, but it's just not something that, that really interests me. And I think sometimes the people that program and the people that are in the end that actually interpret the data, it's sometimes two different skills. The people that program are very A to B to C, but when you get to these, these gene lists and when you're actually trying to interpret the genomic data, I mean, it's a lot more nebulous. It's, it's not a, a pipeline at that point. And it, it kind of becomes an art form. So I think sometimes the skill sets that allow people to program versus 
allow people to interpret lots and lots of data can be very different. So that's my excuse for not programming. I'm doing it on purpose so I can, you know. <laughs> but um, so what I do is I use pro programs that actually are, are tailored, you know, GUIs basically. So they have kind of a, a dashboard on top of all the programming. Uh, one of the ones I use probably the most is Partech, Partech Genomic Suite. I also use Jump. Um, it's kind of, it's from the, the company, the SAS program. Um, and you'd be surprised, I use a lot of Excel. The thing is, is that people I work with don't understand Jump or programming or some of these kind of fancy things that you can do. So what you have to do is give them basically Excel sheets with all their data on it. And so being able to manipulate Excel in a way that helps me display the data form is a huge uh, thing that I do. So, I mean, Excel is, Excel is probably the, the one software I use the most. Some of the bioinformatics informatics platforms that I use. And so this would be more the interpretation of the data. Um, I would say there's two big databases that people use for the interpretation of bioinformatics. Then one of them, probably the most popular one is IPA, uh, uh, Ingenuity Pathway Analysis. Anybody hear that program at all? Yeah, it's become a lot quite popular. So this is a text miner. And so what they have done is, so the legend has it that they have like this, like 300 postdocs out on this island outside of you know Silicon Valley, just going through like PubMed and like characterizing all these relationships. So it's, a, it's basically a human curated text miner. And so what you do is you, you can throw genes or proteins through in there and they will basically tell you what's connected to each other. Again, this is a text miner. Illumina, on the other hand, this is a completely different kind of platform. And instead of going on what's been written in the literature, what they do is you're actually mining the data itself. And so Illumina, everybody's heard of Illumina, right? Yeah, they're going to own the world here pretty soon. They, they sequence like 95% of everything on this planet. If you know somebody who works at Illumina, make friends with them because, uh, yeah. Anyway, so, so Illumina is very good at data. And what they've done is they've gone through basically all the public data out there. And this is in PubMed, this is in uh, GEO, Gene Expression Omnibus. And they basically downloaded all these data sets and they've done the statistics already. They basically, they know what the variables are in these studies. They'll basically see what's different between them and then they'll characterize those lists. And so what you can do is you, now you can actually put your gene list in. Say I'm working on colon cancer. And I feel these are the genes that change in my system. I can throw that in there. And it'll basically compare it to everything that's already been out there. So it'll say, hey, your, your gene list is just like this other, you know, prostate cancer gene list or maybe something else. What is nice and what I'll show you here is you can use this database. You don't even need your own data. And that's the really cool thing about bioinformatics now is that you know, why would I just look at my little project when, you know, say you're working on lung cancer or idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis when there's, you know, 20, 30 other groups looking at the same thing that have done, say, genomic studies that you can actually get access to. Uh, and you want me to kind of go over like my typical work day. <laughs> By the way, this is all in pajamas. So, you know, I work at home, so. <laughs> What I, not, what I love is the fact that, you know, I'm a single dad. Um, I have my kids 50% of the time. And it's nice that when I have them, I can get them off to school and I can pick them up from school. You know, I'm working at home. I, my schedule is very flexible. Um, I would say a lot of my day is just spent contacting people, you know. And what's nice is, you know, I have this microphone here. I have a whole setup at home. I can do web meetings. And that's really helpful. And that, you know, with that, I've been able to work with people at Columbia University, people in uh, Japan. It makes it nice is that the technology around today, I think, has really facilitated a bioinformatician and made it very, very easy. And there's a lot of different programs and, and, and web meeting kind of software you can get. It's, it's usually not too, too expensive. All right. And during the day, 
I say if you're gonna work with data all the time, you gotta have a break. <laughs> like you need a mental break. This will staring at spreadsheets all day will make you go crazy. It will absolutely make you go crazy. My 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 kids always know when I've like spent all day analyzing data because I'm just not talking in complete sentences and I see her. So it's always good that, you know, I like working at home because I can always take a, a time out like during the middle of the day and just like go work out, ride a bike, do something. 